Suppose that we want to find the equation of this trig function over here. Well, the first main thing to figure out is whether we want to use sine or cosine, and specifically whether we want to use a positive sine, a negative sine, a positive cosine, or a negative cosine. Now, the cool thing about trig functions is that technically you can use more than one uh, equation to represent the same function. So in some cases, you can just use literally all of these options. Just it depends on how much you want to translate it left or right. Now, in an ideal world, if the trig function starts at the minimum or the maximum or exactly the center, and by start, I mean when x equals 0, if the y value that either the exact minimum or the maximum or the middle, then tech to strategically, you can do this without a horizontal shift at all by strategically picking one of these to be your representation. So to give an overview of it, the positive sign is one where at x equals 0, it starts at the middle and then goes up. So if it starts at the middle and then goes up like that, that's a positive sign. So just to make it clear here, I'm going to just put it like that. A negative sign starts at the middle but then goes down. So overall, that's what you're going to see at x equals 0. And again, overall, the function looks you know, pretty much just like a regular trig function would. A positive cosine would start at the maximum. So it starts up here. And again, the usual trig function beyond that. But I'll just put this. And then a negative cosine starts at the minimum. So with that in mind, since this starts at the minimum, we can use a negative cosine as our overall function. Once we've decided on that, our form so far could just be negative and then a cosine of bx plus c. So long story short, we have to now figure out our a, b, and c. a, b, and c, because we've decided on a negative cosine function. Now the a, b, and c. The a is the amplitude, which is just the max minus min over 2. It's basically the distance from the middle to either extreme. The C, the center, is the average of the max and the min, aka the exact middle, so it's the max plus min over 2. And the B is related to the period, meaning how often it repeats itself, and it's 2 pi over the period. So let's first find the C, the center. So the maximum here on this, on this trig function, let's see, occurs at either of these Y values, so the maximum y value is 2, according to this graph, right? So the maximum y value here is 2. The minimum y value here, we could sort of see if negative 3 is over here and this go by 1, this would be at negative 4. So the max is 2. The min is negative 4. So if we average them, if we average 2 and negative 4 by doing 2 plus negative 4, divided by 2, that would be, let's see, 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So the C here so far is negative 1, right? Which kind of makes sense that if this is at 2 here and at 4 here, it's more negative than positive. The negative, the minimum is more negative than the positive, so it makes sense that a negative would be the exact middle of this thing. So this function, this is sort of the imaginary center line, if you will, of this. Now you have sort of two ways to find the amplitude. You can either use this formula, max minus min over 2, which if you did that, it would be 2 minus negative 4 over 2, which is 2 plus 4, 6 over 2, which is 3. So the a is equal to 3. The other way you could have found that a is 3 is by going to the center and then the so center of negative 1 and then going either to the highest point or the lowest point and seeing how far off it is. So if you're at negative 1, you'd need to go 3 lower to reach negative 4. Or you'd need to reach 3 units up to reach positive 2 from negative 1. So that just verifies that our amplitude is in fact 3 and we could see it visually in the graph. 
So now that we have our a and c, all that's left to do is to figure out the b, which is 2 pi over period. And the period is how often it repeats itself, which you could find by looking at, for example, just the minimums or just the maximums and seeing how much of an x value gap is there between those. So we see that the minimum here occurs at x equals 0. The next minimum here occurs at x equals pi. So the x distance between those is pi units, right? If you started at 0, pi units later, you're back where you started at the minimum. So we know pi is the period. That's how often this repeats itself. Every pi units, it repeats itself. So if the period is pi, then the b is going to be 2 pi over the period of pi. Pi's cancel, and you get 2. So b equals 2. So if you have a of 3, b of 2, c of negative 1, and it's a negative cosine, our final answer is going to be negative for the cosine, negative a was 3, negative 3, cosine of b is 2, so 2x plus c, but c is negative 1, so we can write that as minus 1. So this would be our final answer.